everyone, I'm Emily Robertson, and this is my third and final semester of Biology 881. My first semester, I did my presentation on climate change impacts on sea turtle sex determination. Last semester, I did my project on plastic pollution impacts on sea turtles. This last semester, I figured I'd keep the sea turtle theme going, and I'm completing my presentation on disorientations due to artificial light lighting. This picture I have is from when I did my sea turtle internship in Sarasota, Florida, where an adult nesting female came up to lay her nest, got disoriented, and was found in a beachfront parking lot because she could not find her way back to the ocean. So to begin, during sea turtle nesting season, adult female sea turtles crawl onto beaches at night to lay their clutch and return back to the ocean. To do this, the adults, as well as hatchlings, rely on reflections of the moon off of the water to orient themselves back to the ocean. With increasing demand for urban as well as industrial land development on beachfront properties, it ends up resulting in an increase of artificial lighting and creating light pollution. Sea turtles are ancient creatures and have been around since the time of dinosaurs. Currently, all seven species of sea turtles are considered at the least endangered. Therefore, these impacts that cause a threat to their survival and safety are crucial for their numbers and fitness. The first 24 hours of a hatchling's emergence is considered to be a frenzy period where they are vulnerable and their behavior is critical for survival. Only 1 in 1,000 sea turtles make it to adulthood. Lighting pollution mainly impacts hatchlings as it increases the chances of predation risk, exhaustion, and dehydration. Additionally, disorientations cause an unnecessary amount of energy needed for swimming when the turtle and when the turtle does eventually reach the water. Disorientations do disrupt adult females that are nesting as well, as it has been shown that they will avoid lit areas for nesting and cause stress to the turtle. My first study is exploring the role of artificial lighting in loggerhead turtle Coretta Coretta, nest site selection and hatchling disorientation by Price et al. 2017. This study took place in St. George Island, Florida on 17.5 kilometers of beachfront land. This study site is generally clustered with no assessment for explanation of why this arrangement takes place. This study hypothesized that artificial lighting impacts nest site selection and hatchling orientation. Specifically, that nest site selection is negatively correlated while hatchling disorientations are positively correlated. This study took data from the 2011 through 2015 nesting season, where they used GPS coordinations as well as documenting each nesting activity as either a nest or a false crawl, in which a turtle emerges from the ocean but does not drop a nest on that crawl. During those seasons, hatchling emergences were documented as well as where they defined a disorientation by using Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Policy as five or more hatchling tracks running parallel or away from the ocean. Nighttime luminance surveys were taken throughout the 2015 nesting season by using a sky quality meter or SQM. These measurements were taken over 35 500 meter zones of beach with varying conditions and requirements. In general, they compared the 2015 light surveys with the 2011 through 2015 nesting and hatchling data to make inferences and determinations on the impacts that light pollution has on sea turtle behavior. I chose to discuss figure 2 from Price et al. 2017 that shows the relationship between successful nesting attempts with the average luminance values that were obtained from the study. Every zone is repre represented by one of the black dots. This figure re is represented representative of to the hypothesis of the study that stated that artificial light pollution would have a negative correlation with nesting su success. The statistical analysis used in this portion of the study was a linear regression and also performing square root transformations. Statistical significance of data sets in this study were based off of an alpha of 0 0.05. Price et al. concluded that the number of nests laid by loggerhead turtles decreased significantly with a higher mean landward luminance among each zone in the 2015 nesting season. Figure 2 part b also concluded that the number of nests laid during the 2011 through 2015 nesting season significantly decreased with higher mean landward luminance. Therefore, lighting pollution does have an impact on successful nests being laid by adult female loggerheads. The next figure I included from this study is figure 3. This figure depicts the relationship between the percentage of hatchling emergences that were recorded as disorientations with the mean landward luminance during the 2015 season. For the data on this portion of the study, the data did not fit assumptions for a parametric linear regression. Therefore, they use a lo local linear non-parametric method. 
It is stated in a study that 21 of 202 nests that produced hatchlings had disorientations, which was only 10.4%. The disorientations that followed emergence from nests during the 2015 season was found significant and had a positive trend related to luminance. The 2011 through 2015 season, however, was not found to be significant, where only 98 of 672 nests were said to be disorientations. While the results proved insignificant for the 2011 through 2015 nesting season, this study still concluded their hypothesis relevant as hatchling disorientations uh, was significant and impactful during the 2015 nesting season, regardless of the smaller sample size. Light population does show to negatively impact the orientation of loggerhead hatchlings. In conclusion, Price et al. 2017 determined that beachfront lighting could be the result of the clustered nesting that occurs at this study site. While the methods involved in this study analyzed sky glow impacts, the ma major contributor was found to be artificial lighting due to beachfront developments among the these nesting sites. This study was able to accept their hypothesis regarding a negative relationship with nesting success for the entirety of the seasons being studied. There was no negative relationship for false crawls found. These results can suggest that nesting females may not be deterrent from lighted areas, but it will reduce the chance of the turtle wanting to nest at these areas due to visual cues of landward silhouettes while still in the water and before emergence. Artificial light lighting pollution has been found to severely disorient hatchlings. Figure 3 provided evidence with a positive trend for hatchling disorientations and luminance during the 2011-2015 through 2015, as well as the 2015 season. However, these relationships were not statistically significant. These conclusions provide important evidence for the need of light ordinances, at, least, at the least during sea turtle nesting season, in order to, provide, uh, pr in order to protect this endangered species. Limitations that I found for this study was the limited data for the actual light study. I found it interesting that they included general data for sea turtle nesting seasons of 2011 through 2015. However, to only include a light study from 20, 2015 proved to find some insignificant results. I think the study could have benefited by having a longer study. This study only examined loggerhead sea turtles. It would be interesting to see the impacts that light pollution has on other species of endangered sea turtles as well. There were small sample sizes for the hatchling emergences, and while there was a positive trend in the data, the results were statistically insignificant. I believe that because of the small sample sizes, this is why these results were found. The overall methods of how they were measuring the luminance were confusing and not well explained. It seemed as though the study rushed through the methods portion and were not very descriptive. If you have no prior experience with the methods used, it was hard to understand. The next study that I chose to analyze is light pollution affects nesting behavior of loggerhead turtles and predation risk of nests and hatchlings by Silva et al. 2017. I found this study intriguing as it examines multiple effects of turtle behavior and nesting in regard to different color lights. This study took place at the island of Boa Vista, Cabo Verde during the time period of mid-July through early September of 2012. This study site was divided into nine sections of 60 meter sectors and received treatments of all lighting conditions in order to make observations through all scenarios. Specifically, Silva et al. used yellow, orange, and red lights while also utilizing dark nights as a control. Loggerhead sea turtles were mainly examined, as well as ghost crabs, which often predate on sea turtle eggs and hatchlings. For this project, I will be focusing only on the sea turtle aspect of the study. In particular, Silva et al. studied the different behaviors of each adult female loggerhead that came up to nest under these specific conditions. In particular, they examined the time it took to crawl in up the beach, nesting construction, and the return crawl back to the shore. Additionally, nesting attempts were documented through either successful or unsuccessful, which the unsuccessful crawl is being considered a false crawl, in which the turtle emerges onto the beach but does not lay her nest before returning to the ocean. The first figure I chose to examine from Silva et al. 2017 was figure 3. This figure represents the distribution of both unsuccessful or false crawl and successful or nest attempts of loggerheads under each treatment for the study throughout the nine sectors of beach. A Shapiro-Wilk test was utilized in this study to determine if the data was normally distributed. Then a one-way ANOVA was performed for to test the effects of the different light treatments. Silva et al. assumed a 5% significance level throughout all the statistical analysis. In general, nesting was reduced in orange zones as well as yellow. 
They believe that this is due to loggerheads generally showing a dislike to lights that contain both short and long wavelengths. Therefore, a turtle in this study, turtles in this study seem to react better to the red color light than the orange and yellow colors. From my observations, it appears that even in the controlled dark zone, that while nesting attempts were increased, there were also an increase in false crawls as well. Figures 4 and 5 from Silva et al. 2017 depict the times that it takes in each treatment for certain activities to persist. It was concluded that there was no significant difference in the time that it took the turtles to crawl up the beach in order to select their nest sites, which is shown in figure 4. From my own observations of looking at figure 4, it appears that the, for the dark group as well as the red treatment group had the quickest times as compared to the yellow and or orange light treatments. This information is comparable to the previous figure that found the most successful nesting attempts occurring in both dark and red co uh, conditions. For figure 5, it was found that there were significant differences between the control and the treatment group for orange light. This means that the lighting conditions in this study had significant impact on the time that it took for nest construction to take place. Next, nest construction is a long process that involves body pit excavation, nest chamber excavation, egg laying, nest chamber filling, nest site camouflaging, and seaward uh, orientation, as stated by Silva et al. 2017. Therefore, in general, this process can be time-consuming for any turtle, but having artificial light pollution can make the process more challenging and time-consuming. The last figure that I included from Silva et al. 2017 is figure 6. This figure exemplifies the time that it took for the loggerheads in the return and crawl under each light treatment. It was concluded through an ANOVA test that the presence of light significantly increased the time that it took for turtles to complete their return crawl back to the sea following egg laying. Additionally, there were significant differences between the dark control group compared to those with yellow and orange lights, as well as between treatments with yellow and red lights. In conclusion, this study noticed a decline in overall nesting attempts in all treatment categories. Specifically, there was 20.3% in the red zone, 21.7% in the orange, and 35.2% in the yellow. Oftentimes, the loggerheads would attempt to nest in unsuitable nesting locations, such as areas that are potential to flooding from high tides, below the high tide line, and in zones with denser vegetation. This has a negative impact on the fitness of hatchlings, since the nests are more prone to destruction. It was stated in this study that turtles do not depend entirely on visual cues and often rely on other important factors when determining where to nest, such as temperature gradients, sand moisture, beach elevation, and other favorable conditions. In general, the study observed that when turtles emerged, they avoided the brightest stretches on the varying treatment groups. It also appeared that many turtles abandoned the nesting process in the yellow and orange treatment zones, as well as avoided these zones completely. Overall, artificial lights cause turtles to spend more time on the beach doing more extensive beach crawls, which results in exhaustion, and the turtle could ultimately nest in an unfavorable location where the nest would be prone to predation or other negative impacts. Some limitations that I came across with this study is that it seemed to occur over a short time period. I was unclear of the reasoning behind using the specific light colors unless it would be to test a possible solution to the problem such as a viable option for beachfront properties to utilize to help relieve unnecessary stress to the nesting sea turtle such as the red color that seemed to not cause as much distraction. Like the Price et al. study, Silva also only examined loggerheads and this study lacked to examine hatchlings. And these are my references used for this presentation with the main ones highlighted, as well as my photo reference. Thank you.